Hello and welcome to chapter 153 of our streaming adventure. Today we will be playing Slivers. I, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to say there. Um, the wheel spun up tribal as an archetype. And so I reached out for, you know, what is a good tribe? There's merfolk, there's goblins. Goblins is already on the wheel, though, so I didn't think that necessarily want, wanted to make sense. Elves we've done before. So this is this is out of the, the normal wheelhouse of decks I play. But I, I feel like it's kind of going to be straightforward. We're going to try to have Aether Vial and a bunch of... Voltron -y creatures that just get bigger as they combine together. Unsettled Mariner will be able to kind of give a protection as well as Crystal and Sliver literally saying no to turning off the swords, the plowshares and things like that of the world. So yeah, that, that, that's basically the plan for today. This will be the last stream of the year for me. And Overall, from our humble beginnings back in March, we've, you know, managed to do eight, almost nine months worth of streaming. And I don't want to say built the following, but have have enjoyed the ride thus far. And hopefully as I continue playing magic i'll continue streaming magic and hopefully you'll continue liking to watch magic that's really the best i can do so with what we have we're going to jump into a league that's what came up legacy slivers is where we settled now the, the list I pulled for this, I went with, well, obviously, you kind of got to go with Daniel Nunez because he is the, if you look at the results for Slivers, mo most of the results for Slivers are, are him. So you can see, like, over time. And this particular one was a 7-0 run in the challenge. Now... Is there really anything that different from November to now? I mean, we can look at this one. Is This one is November. Okay. This is the same deck that went 4-3 or 7-0. Oh. So there's, uh, there's, got, there's some lines there. And then... Oh, I guess that was only like a week later. And then here is a... What did he change? He changed... The split between muscle and predatory. And added a mind break trap to the sideboard instead of a force of negation. So. I guess was there an uptick in storm at the beginning of December and that's why they wanted an extra mind break trap. I mean, it's believable. It's at the expense of a force of negation. How many blue cards do you actually have? Gale Rider, Crystalline, Hibernation, your other forces of will. I could see doing that. I could see cutting a force of negation to be a mind break trap. Okay. The other sword, sorry, the Containment Priest against uh, the Aether Vile deck seems a little non intuitive, but I guess there's there has to be a reason for it. Along with, I, I almost wonder is this an anti. Is this an anti unfair deck sideboard? Ley lines? Counterspell, Canonist, Containment Priest. I do kind of wonder. But so I will make that slight change. 
the one month update of cutting a force negation and putting in a mind break trap. Here, let me. Let me update that. Stream Decker. And then we'll get started. All right, blatantly stealing a deck, but that's what we do a lot here, so. Okay. Aether Vile Aggro. Here we go. Do we not have play points anymore? Seriously? Did we burn our play points so fast? Well, I guess we're going to have to open up some of these chests. Trust me. Skill Borrower. How do I make... This is a little bit too big. I don't know how to make this smaller. There we go. Okay. Path of Ancestry. Crystalline Giant. I mean, it looks cool. I don't know if it's worth anything. It is, it is not worth anything. My commander's color identity. Um, yeah. I do remember that. I mean, you can, ca it, it seems like anything that you can cast off a single workshop activation all right, there's a 20, so we only need 40 more play points. Close. I believe the EV is good right now, so we're just going to buy another couple treasure chests because we need the play points anyway. Where's the goat bot? Okay. They already have a path of ancestry. That's funny. Show me your treasure chests. All right, get ourselves some more treasure chests. Five to go with a biorhythm. A Johnny Goldman and an imaginary pet. There we go. There's our 20. And I have a blim comedic genius and a sovereign. Well, good to know. Good to know. All right. We got our 100 play points. So let's go do that lead. Yeah, we uh, bombed out of the challenge, had a 2-3, a 4-1, and then a 1-4. So we burned up some play points pretty fast. Is there a, is there a sliver avatar? Can I change my avatar to a sliver? I 
there might be an I just don't have it. Or I had it and sold it. There's got to be like a Sliver Queen one or something. Alright. I, I guess I don't care enough. And we have found an opponent. All right, round one. On the draw. Last seen playing blue white is what it says. Oh, that's pretty interesting. All right, so what are the mulligan conditions of my deck? I mean, I probably keep this. Yeah, let me bring that deck back up real quick. It says Legacy. Ponder from them. So here's my thought. I go turn one Sidewinder. I could turn to Muscle. All right. <clears throat> I guess the question will be, so I can't quickly get this into play. This does not affect yeah, I, its creature type is Shapeshifter. It's saying this card is every creature type, but I don't get to play it like it's every creature type. Right? I can't cast this off a thing for Sliver. Wait, this, this counts as me casting a Sliver? Seriously? Well, we'll we're going to find out. Well, now I want to hold it for a blue card in case they have, what do you call it? So if I play this, I attack for two. If I play this, I attack for two. And the next turn, attack for more. It's going to only tap for, yeah. So if Oko, is Oko going to make a blocker? Or is he going to shrink my sliver down? 
I'm just wondering if that's the card I care about fighting. So I feel like next turn, I, if, if they don't pump mine, I could play this and attack for one, two, three, four, five. So that's a good draw. So I'm currently not getting the pump, but I think I'm okay with that. They could have force back, but they do. So they had the long-term plan there. Okay, Team Death Touch over there is uh, problematic for me. I need that's why I need my flanking, but I have lost my flanker. That's heartbreaking. Well, I can kill that with a wasteland. Sure. I should have played the hibernation first. I should have played the hibernation first. But that wasn't the plan. The plan was not to play the hibernation first. Ponder.
Okay. They would have to double block this. Okay. I don't think they saw the first strike. Or they did and had a wrath effect coming. Yeah, I don't think they saw the first strike. Or my hesitance to attack tricked them. Sure. They're only down to a single card. I did not notice that they are a Yorion deck. I was not paying attention to that at all. I had missed that completely. So they have a force of negation in hand. So I can attack for 10. Or I can attack for four and clear two of their targets out. That one I don't know if I care about. I don't think I care about Teferi. I guess we'll find out if I do. But I, I, I wasn't sure I wanted to trade three life for Teferi. And them being three life lower means they're dead on board.
So if they hit that one, They would have to have a second swords. So that'll remove the first strike, but they'll at least still take three. Start to reload. Okay. I mean, they did dig into double swords there, so. What do you got? They're thinking, how can they get out of this? What is that? Hey, thank you for the raid. I do appreciate it. We are playing some slivers in Legacy. First round, we are currently up against the snow deck. This seems like an abrupt decay. We might have to hibernate our way out. All right. So they want to kill our hibernation sliver. Do I also need to protect the sinew sliver? They've already had three different swords to plowshares. So I'm going to return it. They cashed in the Teferi to make sure they could clear it out. Which makes sense. Living, okay. Living wish. For a peacekeeper. Well, that seems problematic. I guess we would know if we can draw a wasteland or something that could potentially put pressure on that. Hmm. Well, we're going to throw this one back out there. Hi, what tribal deck besides elves do I think is the strongest? Well, if I if I can't say elves, I don't know. Goblins has been pretty impressive. And then other than goblins, the merfolk deck where you can have uh, what do you call it? All right. Can we stop Peacekeeper? 
Can we stop a peacekeeper? I don't think so. We would have to keep them from paying. But I don't believe we can honestly keep a, a peacekeeper. Hey, thank you for the follow. Because even because of the astrolabe, I think even if we catch them with wasteland, they're going to be able to pay it. And are they going to be able to find a way to eventually kill us? I think so. I'll play a new one. All right, so I'm going to sit back a little bit. I don't know if is it... That's the question. Is it worthwhile to continue to play this game? Because I literally can't win until they do something on their part. So am I just burning clock? And I'm, I'm the one that's behind. I do, I'm starting to wonder, as the one that's behind, is it just, is it not even worth continuing to play? Should I try to get into the next game? I guess this can let me see more of their deck. Clothis, yeah, and then they sit behind Peacekeeper and Clothis will eat me to death. Yeah, I I think it is not worth my time. Or I think I I think we have a better chance to go to the sideboard games instead of okay, let's give ourselves the 14 minutes to try to win two sideboard games instead of this game which we are obviously so far behind. So, we can bring in a way for us to deal with that peacekeeper or the dismember. I don't know if force of I guess we we still want a way to to fight some of their spells so that's what force of will would help with. And also since we've already seen the death touch, I think the fact that I threw away the sidewinder sliver too early was was probably wrong. What in general? What is this one? Start cranking out slivers. Okay, I didn't know about that one. We have our own Caracas. I feel like we could probably trim a land, though. Because there, there's a lot of lands we don't need to draw. And Caracas, we are not legendary, really, anywhere here. So, is either Sworn Canonist to turn off some of their counter spells? Is that worthwhile? Are they going to have an artifact or enchantment? They, they have astrolabes I might want to mess up. So I might want to mess up an astrolabe. So we cut one card. Is this better to take out certain kinds? Like the first strike guys still seem clever. Again, but against with all the death touch they're going to have, do I worry about that or do I worry about maybe the flyers? I do like Shroud. Is Shroud just a better version of this? It might be. We can still keep one. We can still have the Shroud. And then I think I would trim a flyer over the striking. If I trim, because first strike would always work. 
That's what I'm thinking, that my own flying is less relevant than first strike winning the combat. That's what I'm thinking, though. Hey, Steve. All right, so let's play first. I see turn one Aether Vial, and I keep. I just need to remind myself that they have Yorion. Do not name Slith. Okay. I think I'm just team shroud, muscle sliver, yeah. Well, I think I can put out the striking sliver. And then untap. They're brainstorming on my turn, going into their turn. Pista. So now I have to keep in mind to not tick up the other one or be mindful of it at least. And maybe it would have been, maybe it was better to save that one point of life to sit back and counter the crystalline sliver. And that's probably was the right play is to sit back and wait. Yeah. I got too greedy. What a, what a surprise. I played too greedy and played too reckless. And then maybe it doesn't matter. Because to be able to counter an Oko here would have been sweet. Yeah, so we lose our first striker. I think that helps me overall.
Are they going to have an aether vial here? Or I should say, are they going to abrupt decay here? Take out the sliver. So I should have played the crystalline first. I'm going to keep sending in our opponent. Because then this lets me keep the flying one in reserve. Okay. They currently don't have Death Touch until they find themselves an Astrolabe, and then they will. Come on. BS. So if I play this, and I send this, that should almost be enough. Yeah, because it's nine in the air. Okay. Take that. You got it. Blocks. Take nine. Could they swords their own guy? and live through it. They swords this, go to 10, take 9, go to 1, and then I no longer have Shroud. Maybe. All right, am I dead? And then they untap and they play Dead of Winter. Like I did, I've already wrote down the W. Don't do this to me. Go get Peacekeeper, play Peacekeeper, and I die. Come on, man. <laughs> Boo this man.
So we need to draw a wasteland. Boo, boo, boo. So right now they have Astrolabe, but we can, okay, now they got the basic planes. I was going to say, how do I deal with, Yeah, having the one more creature in play is what mattered early on. And, like, even though we're behind on time, having, lo yeah, having lost our first striker early, I mean, is is this something where I should play on and make them kill me? I'm just wondering, does it make sense to make them kill me in their seven minutes? Or do I do I do the right thing in scoop since Peacekeeper effectively has me dead? No, because we have Dismember. So it's not necessarily over. We do have Dismember, which I was not thinking of. We did put a card in our deck to potentially get out of this. Okay. I get I was I was not thinking of the fact that we actually had we did put an answer in this time. We do have dismember available. So there is a world in which we can fight out of it. But they're also going to just take all of our creatures. See, they're going to get to the point where they can just stop paying for Peacekeeper and start attacking. Not having card draw myself means I'm just at the mercy of do I do I find it or not? Probably by the time I find it, I'm going to have a big pile of food 
and <laughs> no actual creatures. Living Wish, what's this one for? Clothis. I mean, their deck is interesting. They get to sit back as long as this can be defended. And then Clothis will eat. Clothis is a creature, too, but. Yeah, they'll slowly whittle me down because even my out is not an out anymore. Yes, bad. <laughs> And now they have a Yorion just for value. Drew, drew the full set of creatures that I can't use. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah, they're just biding their time. All right, give me my slivers back. What are you going to blink? Maybe we'll deck them. That's fair. Just blink out my peacekeeper and go for the beatdowns. All right, we've had enough with that one. Even even the the game I wrote as a win, I had to say no is in fact a loss. How do you lose O two when you win a game? Not very well, that's for sure. 